we got a big coastal priorities project that include some funding for the Sandringham wetland complex and that gives us the opportunity to work together with the landholders, provide some funding for them to get the materials to build around, you know, eight kilometers of fencing, 11 off-stream modern points, you know, create that opportunity for them to manage cattle a bit better and get them out of their wetlands, you know, in those critical periods to let, you know, nature take its course. I grew up here, so um, I'm, I'm 50 years old now, and, uh, and as a boy, this, um, this is a bit of a paradise because uh, I spent many hours down here exploring and uh, it's a bit of a nature wonderland. And, uh, and so hence I guess I, I fell in love with it, it's in my blood. We spent a lot of time in the marine environment here in the, in the creek and fishing and exploring and uh, it was really a great childhood. So what I want for this, what my visions for this is, is to be a financially viable enterprise grazing cattle, but I want those, th those outcomes for, for, the, for nature as well. So, I want the best of both worlds. I think what that looks like, and I guess this is what the vision is, is that the passage from that marine environment into this freshwater environment is, is enhanced. It makes it easier for them to get in here. And once they're in here, their survival in here is also enhanced. So that, so that when the, the right time of the year comes, those fish can head back over the wall, back in the marine environment, back into, into nature. Today it's a swan day. Um, <laughs> tomorrow it might be pelican day, who knows what, and, uh, and people enjoy it. We have uh, bird watchers um, listed on the internet what they've seen here, we have painting groups come down and they paint it, and I'd like to expand on that. So um, this is what it's all about, this is what, uh, the, the, uh, with those wetlands and the fish ladders, we are trying to feed this, this system right here. This complex that you can see here was actually, was actually uh, here before. That it's, a, it's a bunded wall that separates the mangroves in the distance over there. Uh, that's Sandringham Creek. So that's a, that foliage you can see in the background there is the marine environment. And uh, this is basically the top end of a salt pan sort of complex. So uh, we think about the mid 60s, this wall was put across here and it goes down, there's a spillway over behind us here. This, this lagoon complex uh, catches a lot of water, not so much from our own farm, but a lot of water from west of the highway. So um, we do have other wetland complexes down here that, that manage our on-farm uh, runoff. Mm -hmm. But this one here handles water from west of the highway uh, and, and north and south of us. Uh, hopefully this gives you a bit of a vision of that interface. Over here we have that freshwater environment that we just talked about before. And over here, we have the marine environment. For the last couple of years, we've been working with the community, especially with some interested landholders willing to improve their practices through Reef Trust Phase 7. And uh, Jason Bradford is a really good example of it. For the last couple of years, he's been uh, chasing us up, seeing if what funding was available, and he wants to improve his, his land, and we've been working together since. In late, the complex itself has changed a little bit in that time. That's one of the reasons that drove me to seek help from you guys in reef catchments because this grass here, this, this grass here, this grass is an introduced species from South America. It's called Hymenacne. And it's a fantastic grass if you're a cattleman. I call it a, it's, it's a cattleman's dream, but it's a barrow's nightmare. And uh, the reason for that is that it, it can, when it's not managed properly, it can be invasive. If you do a little bit of a pan around, you'll see the potential of it, like it gets thick and it'll grow in water up to about two metres deep. So we're pretty fortunate at the moment in that uh, there is a bit of open water here, but a few years ago, due to various different things, um, this entire complex was almost choked with hymenacne. And that raised some alarm bells. That's not what I remembered as a boy. Um, as a young bloke, uh, it was, it was uh, lily pads like you see there now, and, and, a, and a heap of native reeds along this edge here, and a lot of open water. So what you're looking at here, it's a very different style of fence than what I've ever put up before. It's called a western fence. It's a, it's a, it's a Gallagher western fence. So it's uh, six plane wise, it's an electric fence. So they go on this paddock and they learn not to touch the fences. Mm -hmm. so, so what happens is when they go out into, into the more extensive areas, um, they, they don't muck with the fences, which saves me a lot of money in the long run because I don't have to go and maintain that. The other advantage of this that I really like is the wildlife side of it. because 
in a, in a traditional four or five wire barbed wire fence, we're used to seeing some losses. Mm -hmm. Bats, birds, it's unfortunate, but it's reality. Another really interesting point is that uh, on this place, we obviously have ample surface water and we've always just relied on surface water. So what that en entails is the cattle are going down, they're muddying it up. So we would lose cattle to get bogged occasionally, etc., etc. It's been really fascinating to see the cattle, they prefer to use these troughs than they do the groundwater. 